Hello and welcome to another whiteboard training video. I'm Isaiah Henkel, a cheeky scientist. Today I want to tell you a story about somebody who was having trouble uh, getting a response after uploading their resume online. They uploaded over 500 resumes. This is something that I did my last year of graduate school. I thought, well, I just need to upload more resumes. That's going to fix the problem. Uh, but every time I uploaded one, I got the automated response, thank you for your resume, and that was it. Sometimes I got nothing. Uh, if this has happened to you, uh, you know that it's real, and you're, you, what you may not know is that your resume is going into a, a software program, which is referred to as applicant tracking system software, or artificial intelligence. And that software system is looking at your resume, it's using an algorithm to decide whether or not your resume should go on and be viewed by an actual person. So uh, the person who's in the association who was experiencing this, they sent over 500 resumes, didn't hear anything back, they made a few changes, and then their resume started going through. How did they know their resume went through? Because they started getting contacted by hiring managers saying, we received your resume, you look like a strong candidate, come in for an inter interview. They had a few phone screens and they eventually got hired. So what did they change? They made these changes and then immediately after the changes were made, they started getting contacted. I know that seems too good to be true, but we see this all the time. Whether it's your resume, your LinkedIn profile, you make a two millimeter shift in terms of your strategy and what you're doing, and you're going to start getting contacted because as a PhD, you have value. You're likely just invisible to employers. Example, if you have academic job titles bolded on your resume, you're likely invisible. The applicant tracking system software is not looking for academic job titles. Okay, so what do you need to fix? First, let's understand what a resume looks like, how it's structured. Your resume needs to be one pages or two pages at the most. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail on a two-page resume, but I'm going to show you the first page here and something called the visual center. Okay, in the industry, it's known as the visual center. It's the top one-third, right? So this section here, it's the top one-third of the resume. Why is it called the visual center? For two reasons. Applicant tracking system software, the artificial intelligence, it weights this top one-third with 80% keyword strength. That means this top one-third is 80% of the full 100% uh, in terms of the keywords of the overall resume. The rest of the resume, whether it's the rest of the one page or everything else in the two page all together, it's only 20% of the keyword strength. So the keywords that are here, which I'm going to talk about in a second, are much more important, four to one, more important than anything else on your resume, the keywords on other parts of your resume. So what goes into the visual center? A few things. First, your name, obviously, and then your contact details. This is important not because of algorithms or keyword strength, but because most PhDs are not responsive enough to get hired. It's very simple. They put an email address here that's like their personal email instead of their university email because they're afraid their PI is going to see it or something. They put a phone number here and then they never check their phone. When somebody's going through their your resumes, when it's an actual person, so if you get through the software using the strategies we're going to talk about and it gets into the hands of an actual person, they're going to be going through the resumes one after another. They see one that they like, they're going to pick up the phone and call you or they're going to email you. If they don't hear back, they're not stopping their efforts. They're going on to the next resume. Okay, so it's very, very important that when you're looking for a job, when you're serious about getting a job, be responsive um, to the email, the phone number you put in this contact info. Put your LinkedIn address there too. What else is in the visual center? Your three biggest career highlights. Three bullet points. That's all. What's in each bullet point? A transferable skill, a technical skill, and a quantified result, which I'll talk about in a second. In terms of beating the software, Okay, beating the applicant tracking system software, again, more generally called uh, artificial intelligence. What does the software look for? It's a software program. So in one sense, it's complex intelligence uh, in terms of the algorithm, right? They're getting better and better. But in another sense, it's very stupid. They can only look for certain things. What does it look for? Job titles. Now, right away, if you're a PhD, you're like, oh, great, they're looking for job titles. Because I just told you that you only have academic job titles like graduate research assistant, postdoctoral fellow. It's not looking for those job titles. In fact, it's going to weight you negatively if you have those job titles. If it sees something it doesn't like, doesn't want, it's not in its system, you're not going to get a response. Yet, most PhDs put their academic job titles out here in the resume called out and bold it, right? They bold their job titles. The software is elegant enough to look at the bolded words more than the other words. So it puts more weight on the bolded words. And you're bolding things that it does not care about. It does not care about your academic job titles. So Stop highlighting your job titles. This part's not going to help you. So the only thing else that the software looks at are skills. That's it. It's only looking at words, the keywords. 
this is where you're going to win against the software, okay? Your transferable skills, which are here, and your technical skills. Don't just limit yourself to the technical skills, though. Think of transferable skills, project management skills, leadership skills, conflict resolution skills, time management. That stuff matters to employers. Most employers, hiring managers, recruiters, the people you're going to meet first don't have PhDs. They care about the transferable skills. All right, so how do you find the transferable skills and technical skills that the company cares about, that they're putting in the back end of the software? Go to the job posting for that specific job. In general, you can beat the system, you can hack the algorithm, and that's what this PhD did that I told you about at the beginning of the story. They copy and pasted five, 10, 15, I think they did over 20 different job postings for the job title they were interested in. They took all of the text in the job posting, they copy and pasted all of the text together into a word cloud, a free word cloud software that you can find online at wordcloud.com or wordle.com. Okay, what that does is a word cloud, the biggest words in the word cloud are the ones that were used the most in whatever text you input it into it. Do you see what that does for you? You take all of those job postings, and the job postings are just filled with the skills, the technical skills, the transferable skills that company is looking for, people are looking for, for that job position, uh, certainly if it's an individual job posting for the position that you want. Okay, upload into a word cloud, see which skills show up the biggest. Those are the ones that you want to put on your resume, especially in that visual center. Okay, so this is very important. The very last thing I want to show you is, instead of your academic job titles, instead of pulling your job titles out in your work experience section, this is what most people do. They say, you know, postdoctoral fellow, right? They have the job title, and then they have over here, you know, university. Again, these, these two things, A, the, the software doesn't care about, the employer doesn't care about. And then they have their bullet points underneath. Instead, do this. Write a transferable skill or a technical skill, right? One that's on the job posting, one that you saw in the word cloud. And then put gained as, so this part would be bolded here, and then say gained as a postdoctoral fellow at University XYZ. You see the difference there? You're bolding the skills. You're bolding what they care about. This is called a relevancy resume. We're going to talk a lot more about that on our free webinar coming up this upcoming Thursday. Okay, we have a free webinar at 1 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 resume secrets, four PhDs. Make sure that you're attending this Thursday, April 18th, 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thursday, April 18th, 1 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 resume secrets for PhDs. We're going to talk about the rele relevancy resume. We're going to talk about everything I discussed here, plus a lot more. I hope to see you then. If you want to learn more about our programs that help PhDs get into industry jobs, go to PhDsGetHired.com. As always, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.